Unit 6, Lesson 1, Tape Diagrams and Equations. Number 1. Here is an equation. x plus 4 equals 17. A. Draw a tape diagram to represent the equation. The green rectangle represents x, the four smaller rectangles represents 4, and together they represent 17. B. Which part of the diagram shows the quantity x? The quantity x is represented by the larger green rectangle. What about 4? Again, the four smaller rectangles represent the value 4. What about 17? The green rectangle and the four smaller blue rectangles combined equal 17. C. How does the diagram show that x plus 4 has the same value as 17? An unknown amount added to 4 equals 17. The x represents the unknown amount. Number 2. Diego is trying to find the value of x in 5 times x equals 35. He draws this diagram but is not certain how to proceed. A. Complete the tape diagram so it represents the equation 5 times x equals 35. I made all the x's red and I made all the smaller rectangles green and combined all five x's would equal 35. So I added the purple 35 to show that the total would equal 35. B. Find the value of x. I know that 35 divided by 5 equals 7, so the value for x would be 7. 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7 would equal 35. Number 3. For each equation, draw a tape diagram and find the unknown value. A. x plus 9 equals 16. My green rectangle represents x, the unknown value, plus 9 smaller rectangles would equal 16. So in green is the unknown value, the red rectangles represent 9, and then purple represents the combined total of x plus 9, and that would equal 16. The value would be the same as 16 minus 9, which would be 7, so x equals 7. Since 16 minus 9 equals 7, then 7 plus 9 would equal 16. B. 4 times x equals 28. The green rectangles represent 4. The x inside each rectangle represents the value. So 4 times what value equals 28? That's going to be the same as 28 divided by 4, and that equals 7. Since 28 divided by 4 equals 7, then 4 times 7 would equal 28. The value for x would be 7. Number 4. Match each equation to one of the two tape diagrams. A. x plus 3 equals 9. That would be matched with diagram B. B. 3 plus x equals 9. That would be matched with diagram A. C. 9 equals 3 times x. That would also be matched with diagram A. D. 3 plus x equals 9. That would be matched with diagram B. E. x equals 9 minus 3. That would also be matched with diagram B. F. x equals 9 divided by 3. That would be matched with diagram A. G. x plus x plus x equals 9. That would also be matched with diagram A. Number 5. A shopper paid $2.52 for 4 and 5 tenths pounds of potatoes. $7.75 for 2 and 5 tenths pounds of broccoli. And $2.45 for 2 and 5 tenths pounds of pears. What is the unit price of each item she bought? Show your reasoning. Pound of potatoes is on the right in red, and the dollar amount that she paid is on the left in green. She paid $2.52 for 4 and 5 tenths pounds of potatoes. So to find the unit price, the price for just one pound, we would have to divide 4 and 5 tenths by 4 and 5 tenths. And that gives us one pound. 
Since we divided the right side, or the pounds, by 4 and 5 tenths, we'd also have to divide the left side, or dollars, by 4 and 5 tenths. So 2 and 52 hundredths divided by 4 and 5 tenths equals 56 hundredths, or 56 cents. The potato was 56 cents per pound. Broccoli was $7.75 for 2 and 5 tenths pounds. So again, we need to get the pounds to its unit price. So 2 and 5 tenths divided by 2 and 5 tenths equals 1 pound. Now we need to divide $7.75 by 2 and 5 tenths. And that is 3 and 1 tenth. She paid $3.10 a pound for broccoli. The pears cost her $2.45 for 2 and 5 tenths pounds. In order to find out the unit price per pound for pears, we need to divide 2 and 5 tenths by 2 and 5 tenths to get 1 pound. $2.45 divided by 2 and 5 tenths equals 98 hundredths or 98 cents. The price she paid for pears was 98 cents per pound. Number 6. A sports drink bottle contains 16 and 9 tenths fluid ounces. Andre drank 80% of the bottle. How many fluid ounces did Andre drink? Show your reasoning. Well, if the sports bottle contains 16 and 9 tenths ounces, that would be 100% of the bottle. If Andre drank 80% of the bottle, we'd have to figure out how to find 80%. I'm going to start by changing 100% to 10% by making it 10 times smaller. 10 times smaller than 100% is 10%. Now I need to make 16 and 9 tenths ounces 10 times smaller. 16 and 9 tenths ounces divided by 10 would be 1 and 69 hundredths ounces. So 10% would be 1 and 69 hundredths ounces. Now to figure out what 80% would be is I'm just going to multiply the 10% times 8 to get 80 and I need to multiply 1 and 69 hundredths ounces by 8 and that gives me 13 and 52 hundredths ounces. Andre drank 80% of the bottle and 80% of the bottle is 13 and 52 hundredths ounces. Number 7. The daily recommended allowance of calcium for a 6th grader is 1,200 milligrams. One cup of milk has 25% of the recommended daily allowance of calcium. How many milligrams of calcium are in one cup of milk? If you get stuck, consider using the double number line. 100% is 1,200. 50% would be half of that, so 50% would be 600. And I know that 25% is half of 50%, so half of 600 would be 300. So 25% of 1,200 is 300. There are 300 milligrams of calcium in one cup of milk. Congratulations, you've completed Unit 6, Lesson 1, Tape Diagrams and Equations.